Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Derek Green, the singer of Sepultura. And we're going to be having the storyteller edition of our Sepul Quatre. That's Sepultura every Wednesday. And so I'm doing my storytelling edition. And I'm going to be talking about the against phase. The first album that I recorded with Sepultura and what it was like entering into the band and what was happening during that entire process. So this is a pretty good story. So get ready and let's get into it. Basically, I was living in New York City, being a bouncer and also doing music. I was uh, working the door at various clubs in the area, primarily bars, not really clubs, but bars, you know, local bars. I know a lot of musicians and people who were going out in the scene. And there was one particular person named Mike Getter who had just started working at Roadrunner Records. I was familiar with Mike for many years and he suggested that I participate in the audition for Sepultura. I had no idea they were looking for a new singer and they had one song called Choke with no vocals and they were looking for someone to add their their ideas to that song. That was the first part of the audition. So I got this tape, it was a cassette tape because then they, you know, they had cassette tapes. It wasn't the time of CDs hadn't fully hit. I mean, they were expensive and everything. So nobody was like burning CDs or anything. That's how long ago it was. And uh, I got this tape and I did my version of it. Um, with the help of a friend of mine named Davide. And Davide was a person who auditioned for Sepultura before I did. Not many people know about him, which is really interesting. He's a very talented musician. He tried out for Sepultura. And in the end, he decided he didn't want to do it. It was like really a lot to take in. Um, but he helped me uh, to create the demo that I sent to the guys in the band. Um, so... A month went by and I got a call, I believe it was from Igor, and he was asking if I wanted to come to Brazil to meet them and to do an audition. I flipped out, lost my mind, and I, I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. So I immediately went to the library because I didn't have a computer, not many people had computers at that time, and I wanted to find out about Brazil. I had never been there, never been to South America, didn't have any Brazilian friends, never heard Portuguese even spoken. I didn't even know if I was hearing Portuguese, if it was being spoken in front of me. So everything was very, very new to me. Um, but it's exciting. It was a really exciting time. Um, so I came to Brazil. I believe Paulo was the first person to pick me up at the airport. And we did a lot of stuff, man. We went to football games, went to the beach, partying, hanging out, getting to know the guys. I stayed at um, each person's house for a little bit uh, so I could get to know them and their family. And then the week after, we started the actual audition in the studio. This was really difficult. Uh, to say the least, I, I I hadn't really become that comfortable with the guys yet. Um, the situation was intense because they had their friends uh, come and check out the studio while we were there. Um, it, it was really tough. I didn't realize how big the band actually were in Brazil from walking around and everyone knowing them. And um, there was a lot of things going on in my mind, so it was hard to really focus on the reason I was really there. Um, so the first few days in the, the actual rehearsal were horrible, um, very bad. Uh, and I wasn't really sure if this was gonna happen or if it was gonna work. I don't think the guys were sure either. Um, I went away to the beach with Paulo for like a day or two days and, and hung out with him and his family. And he was just like, hey, you really want this? You have to really push yourself and let everybody know what you're about. So when we got back, we started the rehearsals again. And 
the rehearsals were very difficult. It wasn't what you were thinking. They would actually play new songs. They weren't playing any old songs. Played new songs and they play it. Okay, now you sing it. Make up whatever you want to do. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I got to make up, you know, just off the top of my head. And they're like, yeah, it doesn't even matter if there's real words, just do something, you know? And so this was nerve wracking. It was really terrifying to be in the room and hearing this powerful music coming through and then just having to make up things at the top of my head. Um, but eventually we started to to click. Uh, one thing that, that really, really helped the whole process is that we did one cover song, which was a cover song of Bad Brains. And that was really cool. That really connected us. And from then on, things got a lot better, became a lot more comfortable, you know, because, I mean, A, Bad Brains is a big influence for me and for those guys. And um, it put me in my comfort zone. So after all the auditioning and everything, I came back to New York um, and was waiting and waiting. And then after a month, they decided that they wanted me to come back and start the recording process for Agents. So everything hap was happening immediately, quickly, very quick, right away. Um, so the first thing that we were doing, we started the recording sessions in Brazil with uh, a really interesting, amazing person, Carlinhos Bartolini. He was the, one of the producers of Against, uh, and also Howard Benson, who was in the US. So the recording process was crazy. It was everywhere, it was scattered all over the place. We started part of the process in Brazil. I believe we started with drums at Carlinhos Place, which was already insane. It was the interior of uh, Sao Paulo. And he had these two crazy Rottweiler dogs that were there. And they had the worst names. I, I, I'm, Carlinhos, I, I'm sorry, that was a really bad idea to name those dogs because it took on these personalities of, I think it was Nero or Hitler or one of them. And there was like horrible names. And, uh, and, they, and, and they were vicious, you know, and, 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 and I love animals, but these animals were, were, were deadly. You know, we, we had to know where they were in the house in order for us to, to enter that part of the house. We had to close off certain areas so we wouldn't be killed. So the recording process was pretty intense, to say the least, with uh, killer Rottweilers walking around the premises. Um, so we recorded part of the album in Brazil. Then we came to L.A. to record the other part of the album um, and recording with uh, Mr. Howard Benson. And Howard was... he. At the same time of recording in L.A., he had also come to Brazil and recorded uh, part of the album there as well. And Howard had just started using Pro Tools. This was something very new at the time. Um, he was just getting into it. So the recording process was really uh, partially digital and partly analog. It was a mixture. So, I mean, we were just really... Uh, trying to keep this fire going, you know, with the band, because there had just been the split and the separation, and we just wanted to to really unite and create um, something that would stand stand up for, for all those many years that the band had been together and, and just really show people that we were together and united. So the process was really intense. Um, it was a lot of work. Um, a lot of trial and error on my part as far as vocally. Um, and at one point, um, there was a recording session that was going on that was going to take place in Japan uh, with uh, Kodo. The idea is that we, for the song Kamatachi, uh, was recorded in Japan uh, with the Kodo drummers. So everybody in the band left, me in the studio, by myself, um, recording vocals. Uh, for part of the album so that that kind of sucked because I wanted to go to Japan I wanted to uh, be a part of the the, the process of the recording process of the Kodo and, and and see how everything was 
taking place there. But uh, my job was to really focus on the vocals and, and stay in LA in the studio doing that. So the process is very difficult. At the same time, uh, the label, Roadrunner Records, uh, there were part of the people, there were certain people working at the label that didn't feel that I was the, the right singer for the band. And so for me, um, it didn't really hurt any feelings. I just thought it was stupid um, that we were part of this team where people didn't believe in what we were doing. Um, I honestly didn't get into a fight or any of the, or anything silly like that with the people that were at the label, but it, it definitely made it difficult for us to have the freedom and, and security of doing something, um, that we, uh, were all together on. So it was primarily, you know, us, the band fighting against, against, uh, some of the people at the label for, for who we are, who we are, you know, who we were at that time. So this was, it was really difficult. There was a lot of things going on as far as the recording and battling with the label, all this craziness. Um, at the same time, we had great support from people, um, from friends, from other artists, and especially Jason, Jason Newstead um, was a big influence um, and, and really, uh, connecting with him, um, having him be a part of the recording process was fantastic. Uh, we were able to go to Jason's house and record part of the album there as well. Um, it was great. He was completely with us, you know, he completely believing in what we were doing. Um, and it was a great time, you know, we really clicked and connected. And I spoke with Jason about being a new guy in the band, and he really understood what I was going through. Um, even after that whole recording process, I was in Florida and on vacation, I believe, and I get a knock at the door, and I he had delivered to me, Jason delivered to me a baritone bass guitar, which was... Uh, it, it was amazing. I wasn't expecting it. It was something that I, I, I admired that he had at his studio and he sent it to me. And, and uh, I'll never forget that. You know, I was really uh, impressed by, you know, his, his understanding, you know, of the situation that I was in. So that was something that was very cool that came out of it. Um, we did a bunch of we had the idea of doing these type of secret shows and calling the band Troops of Doom. And so we were doing this um, at smaller gigs and we had a lot of support from the Gracies. I remember Scott Ian being at the first show. Um, I believe it was at House of Blues. Um, it, 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 was, it was awesome. You know, it was really terrifying. I remember at the time, like everybody was really nervous. Um, but we did that show at the House of Blues and Brick by Brick, I think, that in San Diego. And, um, you know, we're like kind of like warm up shows. So, uh, you know, with the support of like fans and, and really good friends, um, everything was really working out in, a, in, a, in an unbelievable way. Um, that was, you know, some of the first shows that we did in the U.S. The biggest show that we did was the Barulho Contra Fome. It's Noise Against Hunger. It was a special show that we did with a lot of artists that came, um, a lot of friends. Um, Carlinhos Brown, uh, who participated on the Roots album, uh, Jason Newstead, Mike Patton, the Shavanti Indians came to perform. They had never been to a city before. Um, they had never been out of the, their actual, uh, village that they were living in. Um, Jairo, uh, ex-guitarist of Sepultura, um, it was a huge event. And again, I was there like freaking out, but it was something that I always wanted to do was play in a band that, um, many people were able to see, um, participate in a band that, um, where everybody was together and, and, and I, and I felt that, you know, uh, playing that show with everybody in the band, 
with all the people, all the guests that came, all the support that we had. It was something that I, I, I will never forget. And I, I think the people that were there will never forget it as well. But that was my first introduction into Brazil. There was thousands and thousands of people there. Um, I can't even remember the number, but it was just like looking out over the, the amount of people was insane. And, um, you know, it, it really, these shows, like this preparation was getting us ready to go on the road. You know, the, one of the biggest and first tours that we had were with Slayer, opening for Slayer and then opening for us. Or actually the whole bill was Systems of a Down, Sepultor, Slayer, and that was in Europe. And that was one of the first tours that we did. And that was incredible. Um, it was a great experience for us as a band to to get used to each other playing on stage live. And, uh, and, and opening, you know, for Slayer was something that was a, a dream come true. You know, it was, it was far beyond what I imagined um, joining this band. But this all happened within a year, a year and a half. You know, everything super, super quick. Um, but it was the best thing that could have happened. You know, the learning, I learned so much in such a short amount of time. And all those events really have led us to where we are right now. And me actually doing the storytelling and um, I'm really happy about how everything uh, has been turning out and the journey still continues. So that I think will sum up a lot of what was going on at the very beginning of me joining Sepultura, the against process. And uh, it's, it's something that very important in the history of Sepultura. I wanna remind everyone to all the fans to to subscribe. Um, it's really important to subscribe to the page. And every Wednesday, we're going to be here. Be here for you guys. That's what we do, yo. You know, so 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 4 p.m. in Brazil, and 9 p.m. Central European Time. So be, be sure to check us out every Wednesday. And I hope you enjoyed my story. We'll see you guys next Wednesday.